Hello, everyone. So I want to focus on the non-technical development of humanity. As an engineer in training, I've learned about a lot of really cool technologies, um, from really basic technologies about, uh, I, I guess, considering uh, water towers. When your power goes out, you're able to still have running water in your house. Um, from all the way to the other side of the spectrum, when we're using fish bone to be able to clean water in the East African Rift Valley, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, and so I, I want to talk about all of the aspects that go into the development of a person. Um, and I want to start off by saying I love water. I really enjoyed water um, in a really fun way, also in a really, uh, in a really powerful way. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, also, but particularly, especially using water as a tool for development, to be able to not use you know, tr tr traditional development in the sense of, okay, we're going to be able to get water and take clean showers every morning, um, but also you know, to have ice in our smoothies, um, but also in the non-traditional sense of uh, the entire person, the, the entirety of a person. So I'll talk about it in the sense of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, I guess real quick question, who had, a, who had a glass of water this morning? Who took a shower this morning? All right, all right, a few less people. Um, <laughs> physiologically, a lot of people had some water. Um, also, cities buy and sell water, so that provides financial safety. They're able to use that in that way. Also, if, I don't know if many of you live in castles, but some castles have moats around them, and that provides physical safety from invaders. Um, but also, you can see that water also provides love and belonging. I grew up swimming the river with my dad and my brother. And that was a blast. I mean, we'd go to the river and just jump in, cannonball. Um, it was so much fun. Um, and so even here, uh, that I want to talk about how we can use all levels of development to reach that top level, the self-actualization, to be able to engage our creativity. And so here I am as a young child with my brother looking into the river and thinking, wow, what's going on over there? What are these little green floaty deals up on the top? And now I realize those are, okay, those are bacteria. Um, <laughs> I can probably start naming some of them. Um, but then also uh, just diving in into the water, it's crystal clear, it's, it's beautiful. And then having such an intimate relationship and diving down deeper, what's going down at the bottom? What's under this rock? And then also leading all the way to sharing a social experience uh, with the entire city of San Marcos. There's 300 people jumping in the river on New Year's Day. Um, and here I am jumping with a, a sombrero and a poncho. Um, it was a blast. Uh, it was 70 degrees, uh, 72 degrees the water, um, but it was 40 degrees outside. It was a little difficult getting out. But also to be able to express my creativity through this standing wave. And so um, here's a, uh, a video that shows, like, if you get just jump in just at the right angle, you're able to like, land on this surfboard, kind of finagle your way up, and then actually surf forever, uh, you know, provided as long as you're, you're dodging children and, um, and kind of, you know, make sure that you're able to balance properly. Um, but also, it's really provided an experience for me spiritually, just to be able to walk alongside the river, to be able to see, wow, this is, this is a really beautiful place. There's a really silent place to be able to truly experience, like, wow, there's, God is present. <laughs> I can walk here and, and really just meditate and, and experience that silence. And so that's what led me to study environmental engineering, to be able to join Engineers Without Borders, to be able to focus on uh, sharing that experience with other people. And so we now currently have a project in Rwanda, and this child here is about to fill up his jerry can, his 20 liter jerry can, and we're about to consume it. Uh, and so this is some of the water that he's about to drink. And um, we tested the water, and it had counts of um, E. coli and cholera um, bacteria. And the last thing on his mind might be how can he reach self-actualization? How can he fully creatively express himself? And so this child here, um, very similar situation. This, this, uh, this hand pump actually had counts of uranium um, in the water, just naturally occurring uranium. And so the family, you know, they might not necessarily be thinking about that, that fifth level of um, creative expression. And, but here we see a glimpse, same child, same child, expressing himself creatively. He, kind of flipped the, the hand pump, instead of just being a simple hand pump, now he's made it into a jungle gym. Oh yeah, how simple that was, just to be able to start hanging and, uh, and dangling there. And I think that's a really subtle, but very necessary thing that we need to notice as we begin to develop the entire countryside. What, is it that thi what are the things that we need to focus on as we can try uh, to establish and develop this community that we're working in? And we need to consider the social development as well. We need to be able to consider the, uh, the people being able to teach one another, especially in a country, the country of Rwanda, where 20 years ago, a million people were murdered over the course of 100 days. You can't just focus on the technical development of persons. You have to focus on the entire development of the person. 
and you know, also can focus on the economic developments of people. This is a bustling market marketplace. This is a phenomenal bus station. It's amazing how the buses are going in and out, and wow, um, really awesome uh, experience to be able to witness that. And then we also, to be able to develop the entire people, you have to focus on the context of the city that we're in as well. Rwanda is a big place. Rwanda is a beautiful country. It was a really amazing experience to be able to go there with Engineers Without Borders. And so I would like to challenge all of us here, whatever discipline we may be involved in, whatever, if you're an engineer, an accountant, or um, you're studying psychology, whatever it is, whatever the solutions that we're offering up to society, we need to make sure that we're not focusing on that one-dimensional solution. We can make these solutions multi-dimensional in order to be able to provide a more holistic solution so that we can fully experience what humanity has to offer. Thank you.